Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hucolo webinar. Today, we have our special guest, Roxanne Swainhart, coming to us live from Texas. We're all very excited to have her here. Today in the room, we have Alex, Christine, Dave, Michelle, Rocco, uh, of course, Roxanne, Selesh, and myself, Karen Newman. And Roxanne, why don't you uh, just take it away? Take it away. <laughs> I'll be here to just filter just like, questions and, and here you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, thank you everyone out there uh, for tuning in, whether it's uh, now or watching it later. It's always in the now. My name is Roxanne. I'm a channel here um, playing in the game of humanity, uh, rocking the world. And what we'll do today is uh, it feels like just to start the channeling. Uh, hey, Michelle. Um, I didn't see how she just came into the room. And go from there. And if you want to type in on uh, some Q and A, uh, we'll do a little bit of Q and A when the time comes. Uh, Karen will handle that, and I can be found at odysseyofascension.com and Odyssey of Ascension on YouTube. So I think that's about it. And I, um, you know, it's funny. The nows just kind of play out. You know, you don't really want to set yourself in time, and that's almost obtuse to humanity in and of itself. Is not to have a plan. And planning things is the language of limitation. And I'm understanding that. I, I channeled something new the other day in the Sylvester classes, uh, the slide classes. They're on YouTube. Uh, they're the little Earth and Ka and Cupid and um, Headmaster and different ideas. And, um, you know, we're, we're all learning this new language of the now. And, and, and uh, you know, you come into this idea, and here we are in a webinar. And... It has expectations about it. Humanity does. Um, you know, you have you're joining in. You're looking at this as a measurement, something of, of something of benefit. So am I going to get anything out of it? Is this a waste of my time? And it's not <clears throat> each everyone. It's all the individual, and that's where the mastery comes in to be um, to be honest with yourself. And so you come into this idea and. It just starts and I feel like, okay, am I going to channel? And I didn't feel any, any kind of presence in the now to channel yet, you know, you know it's still the now. Um, and, and it's great. It's great that we get to, to we get to explore in, in, in this way with ourselves more so than uh, exploration of planning and outcome exploration of, of limitations with uh, expectations. Because when we put a, 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 an expectation on reality, the vibration is going to contain it with itself and then that field. So the results are going to be within the equal of that vibration. And that's the known because we cannot project them from ourselves of the known, the thinking mind of experience of the past to project the unknown and create something that's beyond you. Um, you got to allow that. You got to allow the heart to to breathe and, and come into the now and start and start choosing something that is uh, – is that your worthiness? So, you know, here we are starting with no plans and uh, there's a connection, isn't there? There's something of, of value already. And it may not be appetitical to the mind that seeks itself in attainment of better worthiness causes or badges of honor to seek itself in its own admiration through envy of others. But what it does do, it feels, you know, you feel connected. And connection is something that cannot be severed. We're all in existence. I mean, I'm here, you're here, everyone has their own awareness. So that means we're chosen to exist. So that means one thing that we are, I am. We're here and now, right? We're, 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 we're here. So that is connection in and of itself. It's now the mastery of relating to it. And I think the language of the now really offers that. And this is a new thing for it. We just, we just channeled this on Thursday night in Sly's class, Sylvester's class. And it was an epic channeling. We're going to post it up on YouTube. Um, you know, they, they always get better. But this is this is a whole new thing, a whole new world. And it's not a world to play with to confine. It's not to label. It's not to make it known. It's not to take the gestalt of what it is and through our filters of reality, bend it down to the colors, the colors that we only validate. Because I know the universe is full of colors. You know, I think the Hubble just showed us that when we change the filters on the Hubble pictures, we see an incredible amount of colors that the universe offers us. But we're bound to a certain frequency of reality, and therefore that's our experience. 
the language of the now doesn't have limitations on it, but our, our truths, our beliefs, our filters do. And that gives us our direct experience to what we are. You know, we're creators through our interpretations. I think Bashar said it best. The entire universe is neutral and we assign it meaning. We assign it meaning in our truths. And our truths is what we think we should and could and ought to and haves and don'ts and wants and needs and musts. And joys and sorrows and sufferings and pains and glories and ecstasy and passion and compassion. And see, those are our ideas of the limitation language. The language that says, over here, this is what's right, this is what's true, this is how we have to relate to this world. But the language of the now doesn't give those filters. It gives an offering of the unknown, something different, and a plan to plan the webinar, to plan the channeling, to plan where things are going to go, are going to be contained within that field. You can effort yourself in ideas of goals. The Olympians worked their ass off and, and became very successful in, and attained their gold medals and medals. And just to be an Olympian in and of itself is an honor. And they did the work and they grind it out and they practiced and they, and they did that. And that was an accomplishment. And that's a sense of pride and the sense of being. And that's the way they can relate to reality. That is their own truth. And everyone can do that. And everyone has that. But we don't have to do that. We can, we can find a whole new way to relate to reality. We can find something that is absolutely stunning in the now. And it's beyond what we think we should be or could be or have to be or must be. And of course, even what we want to be. We can be something of absolute difference to ourselves. We don't need to be different to the world. We don't need to jump on board with the latest craze and use that as a badge of honor and shun people who do not jump on board with our newfound freedom that is contained and also demanded in its own imagery. We don't need to be that today. What we can be is we can be something else. We can be the language of the now, and that's unconditional. And that lets creation flow through us in the billions of colors that we've been blinded to through our own absenteeism, our own, uh, let's say, disconnection to creation of forgetfulness. The default of being birthed in the idea of the separated mind, not knowing each individual, each and any one of you, fathers and grandfathers and wives and husbands and friends and strangers and bosses and children, are gods, are literal 100% creators. And we're all that same idea. And I think that's what this is about today, is that we can all be something that we've never been ourselves and it's scary to be yourself now i know in your mind you're you're claiming that but if you have to claim and justify with ideas of identity that's not yourself that's an image created for some kind of awareness connection to be accepted to fulfill your unworthiness returned through that temporary fix mm -hmm. that drug of admiration or envy from another See, the self, ourselves, are whole. We have no lack. We have no emptiness. We seek nothing. The now gives us everything. It's beyond measure. But our mind measures, our separation measures, and we measure in the ideology of, of what's best, what's better, what's good, what's bad, what's despicable, what's uh, atrocious, what's horrible. And that's the language of limitation. And we're very well versed in that. We can crush someone's heart in a minute. We can fulfill them with lack in any moment and kill ourselves in the same mannerisms. We can depress ourselves and beat the crap out of ourselves emotionally and physically because we're creators. Not because of karma or cause or effect or evil or bad. It's because we're gods. And gods know themselves as truth and that therefore that's why there's a reality. When you let the unconditional flow through a filter, it's going to give you an experience. And that experience is in this idea realm as a human is equated to emotional input. And emotional input gives you the experience of now. And then we measure that experience of now with a polarized version of ourselves, our individual singular intimate truth of our measuring scale. One man's trash is another man's treasure. 
and we can find that, that some person is not upset as you are at some atrocity of the world and you want them to be upset is because you need that connection of worthiness. You want them to think the same way you do because you don't know how to think for yourself. But the thing is, is don't think. We never had to think, never. We just had to be. We didn't know though. We're always trying to keep ourselves busy in time with purpose and accomplishment so we can end up dead. Well, we're all going to go there anyway one day. We're going to find an experience of not being this idea anymore. It may not be a physical death, but it's going to be a turning away, a different focus in the now, a focus of, let's say, what is potential than the unknown, the remembrance of I am. So the self that you are, that you image yourself, is going to die. But I promise you this, you're not going to. Your existence has been chosen, and there's nothing you can do about it, so you might as well get over that you are the I am that we all know we are which is priceless, of course. So I think what you, what we can understand today is something about this new way to relate to reality. And it's not a way to relate to reality and polarization by asking people questions about what this is and what that is and who we are and what should we do and have you done this? And if they don't give you the right answer, then you have a, a reason to contain them within a field of operation that gives you some kind of comparison. And if that comparison is measurable by gain, then you know you make yourself feel better at their expense. And I don't think that's godly. It's perfectly godly in separation, but I don't think it's godly holy. Because the God that's whole needs no idea comparison. Because we're immeasurable. We are. So I think what we're going to learn is humanity goes forward in its own movement of itself. The appetites of the spiritual realm in and of itself is another label. It's another distraction. It can be easily turned into another religion. It can be comparison and containing. It can be a, just as separatist as flags and countries and borders and political stance and race and creed. The spiritual world can do that in a heartbeat. And we're good at it already. You can see that. We've given ourselves this idea label. Star seeds and rainbows and vegans and non-vegans and meat eaters and we continue to contain because we know a language and that language is limitation we know the separate we know that polarity we're very good at it once again don't forget that we're good at it so it's easy to be that it's exceptionally easy to be that idea because we're very used to it it's our comfort zone we we rely on what we know because we had been forgotten you see the language of the now doesn't offer that it offers a view of reality that's not polarized, and that's very unfamiliar. It's, it's very strange to be something that's not measured. And I felt it first time last week. I was channeling Cupid, Valentine's Day, a couple weeks ago. And then I channeled also an idea called Ka, K-A. And I felt something in that measurement, that there was no measurement. And it was very strange. It was very unfamiliar. It was an entire new playground. Come on, you guys. You guys remember when we were little? Sometime you walked out to a new fairyland. You did. And it was magical. And at that time, you went. Because there was no tears, fears rather, taught, poured down your throat. The known rammed into you by teachers and authorities and parents who just are as forgotten as you. It's not their fault. It's default. Remember that. Never assign blame. There's no blame to be given here. And if we saw a new playground and we just played. And we played our own way. We built our own castles. We dug. We, we, we created things. We made forts. We played with our dolls and we pretended. Well, that's what the labels said we did, but we didn't. We were in the now, alive. <clears throat> and that's what I felt. I felt a new world, a way to relate to reality. That had nothing to do with the language of limitation. It had everything to do with I am. It was a vibration of feeling that I could not label. 
It was so powerful, yet so perfectly meek. It was a gestalt. It was so big and so huge. And it said nothing of left or right, up or down, good or bad. It said nothing of that. It said isness. And that's where I think humanity has potential to go. And I feel it's done through allowance. Because I discovered it through allowing. I got mad. I got mad at many people in my lives. <clears throat> I get mad at people for measuring me because I'm a transgender. But then again, if I'm a transgender, I'm labeling myself. I'm not a transgender. I'm Roxanne. I let everyone label me now because there's no reason to be this or that. I express what I am in the moment. Sometimes maybe that's a male vibration, maybe it's a female vibration. But see, that's labeling. That's the language of limitation. And the, the cold stone nuts of it is, is that I just am. <clears throat> and it's okay. And I was scared to get that test. Okay, I, was, I was very afraid. We're all very afraid of being lonely. We seek comfort in numbers and communion with our brethren. Of course we do, because we, we, we lack the connection once again, but we think we have to gain it through other people's acceptance. But the kingdom of heaven lies within, and I listened to that, and I found it. I found it within myself. I did. By journeying the brave of my choices and accept reality and accept the limitations of others. Because they know not what they do. They forgot just like I did. I'm sure I was a bigger pain in the ass as anyone else was. So I saw something. I saw that this is my journey and I'm allowed to be myself. And I can take the steps in the now that says, I am. The truth of the now. The language of the now. It has nothing to do with measurement. And I had to learn that through Sylvester. He taught me indifference. See, relating to reality is accepting reality as it is. What are you going to do about it? It's already here. Oh, you could bitch and scream about it. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can judge it. You contain it. You can throw it away. You can neglect it, escape from it. You can do everything that you know. Absolutely. But you also can allow it. And it's going to show you something you've never seen before. I'm telling you that. It will. You have to have a little bit of patience. Not much. And you allow the now, and you're going to start to see a way that you've never been able to relate to reality, feel it in such a way that is blissful without saying bliss. That is awesome. That would be diminished by using the word awesome. It's beyond that. It's beyond measurement. So you allow people to be who they are because they are their own light. And the highest act of love, Osifia has taught me this, is to love yourself. Because if this light is starting to shine, then that means everyone else gets to shine themselves. Because that's an idea of like, look what they can do. That means I can do it. I don't have to mimic them. I don't have to mock them. I can be myself, for God's sakes. And see, that's the return to worthiness. That's the self that's ready to be, once again, the I am. And it never... Never needs to be compared. It never needs to be labeled. It never needs to be contained because it is in and of itself whole. I've never been not whole. <clears throat> and neither one of you have ever been empty. Nobody. We just created this absolutely astounding, unlimited game of limitation. The master class. That very few come to because it means you're severed in your mind from connection. So imagine, if you will, a billion years. That's all. Of course, we're infinity. But let's say a billion years of always knowing connection, of always feeling everyone you've ever known, every, everything you've ever experienced, and also always knowing the unknown the everlasting explorer that we are. And then in one fell swoop, you have a tiny little portion of yourself. The person you see in the mirror every day when you wake up says, I don't know who I am. I have lost my connection. Now that has got to be one scary now. That's beyond fear. That's beyond that absolute anxiety, angst of loneliness. It's got to be Holy shit. 
And we did that. The masters that have joined me in this on this journey. We did that. We chose to be empty. To have this epic experience of remembrance. You see, everybody remembers. We all die. And the lives that we have in the nows, futures, past, it doesn't matter. But we have an experience called remembrance. And we can call that death, but it's really not death. The physical body may die, but that doesn't matter. But we all go back home. But see, I think this journey of this now, where we are, this ascension, hmm? this epic journey, Odyssey of Ascension, that's why I named it that, epic, you know. I think this journey gives us a potential to know inside of this self for gun that just it might be true. That the image of God that we were created as is us. We're the gods. The I am is not the thunderous being of an arrogant separate guy going, I am. Anyone that claims I am in separation doesn't know they are that. Because any wholeness needs no justification. See, I think that we can do that today in the now. That we know that we are those gods. And we chose to be separated for the wonderful heart melting, tear jerking remembrance that we're gone. That all these distractions that we label us ourselves and all these idea rituals and mantras that we repeat and do, it's just an experience of our way to go home. That they're truths, they're rungs of the ladder that we climb together, that we validate in the now. And now there's a new awareness upon humanity. That we are already connected. We never have to go anywhere anymore. We never have to be anything ever again. We never have to run ahead or fall behind. We never have to try. That we're enough in the moment. God doesn't make mistakes. And I'm not a mistake. And neither are you. You're enough. We just didn't know it. That's all. So this new truth that we're finding in ourselves... Is worthiness returned, which gives us a framework, a field of operation to encourage ourselves in choice. See, we have the ability. This is the Ka class, K-A. Go watch it. See, we're choice in the now. So there's no need to choose. But in separation, we learn to choose. So that's a new attribute to humanity, created by humanity contained and exquisitely intimate to humanity, unique to humanity, to choose. Because in the now, there's no two. There's choice. And choice has already been made, vibration connection of knowingness. Never a lack. So reality just is perfection. But see, we have the ability to create a separate point of view, to choose. And that two choose choice gives us different versions of ourselves, of creation in and of itself that we didn't know was possible. So now we can choose other than what we know as a truth. And we can become a new truth. To choose the self of the now, the worthiness returned, instead of the idea of the separatist that has to contain itself within an image. To return to that self that forgot. That scared self that says, I'm not connected anymore. I am scared to death. And you built that idea of personality on beliefs. And they're not yours. They're not. You coveted. You used the blueprints of life to create your castle. Now the truth of it is you have your own blueprints. You have your own castle. So you're tearing down the walls of Jericho, as I love to say. To create your own idea of yourself. To create that your worthiness through your choices. So use the attribute of to choose, but to choose means your heart. You can to choose your lack, of course. Because we're well versed in that language, I'm telling you. 
or what we can do is to choose our heart and that's going to tear down a truth that no longer services you and you're going to put up an entire new idea of yourself a new way to express reality that's not contained and that self-preservation that is scared to be empty once again that's all it is it's just scared to be disconnected again because now it's found its worthiness through its idea of its love for others its acceptance of others acceptance of itself by others to know that is prideful and boasting gets attention to feed its lack its emptiness its heart that cannot be filled and no matter what you shove in there it's still empty because self-love is fulfilling the fountain of youth lies within to bubble up explore that kingdom by choosing your heart your love and you'll be filled i'm telling you and we know that it's very difficult because that ego barks and screams and yells at you every day for not doing what you're supposed to do and whenever it is challenged you fucking bark at people and say no that's not right you need to do this because that's better for you which means you're trying to justify your truth at the acceptance of another which is truly the expense of another isn't it i think we can change guys I think each and every one of us has the ability to, in every now, to change its point of view of a truth that's no longer serviceable because it's a relationship to that. that you know the truth, but you're afraid to choose it because that might mean emptiness again. It might need, need, mean loneliness again. But you're never alone in creation. I promise you that because connection can never be severed from all that is. You have a billion, gazillion, infinite number of cells out there. You're not alone. You just feel empty because you're not getting the admiration that the ego had built to fulfill your lack. But what you can do is go ahead and be something you've never done. And that's yourself to have that worthiness return to fill up your fountain of youth once again with your own love. And it's everlasting. It never runs out. Because it's what you are, creation that is a forever existence. We've just been looking the other way the whole time, that's all. So I think what we can do is when you start to choose your worthiness again, you're going to be scared, uncertain, empty. You're going to be that because there's no more fulfillment of that connection, that drug addiction to admiration and pride fulfilled, ego idea, acceptance trying to always seek everyone else's love and you never get it quite enough. It's never good enough. It's never good enough. They always want more from you. That's why you turn away from that and say, you know what? I'm enough as I am. And it's going to hurt and it feels very, very strange. I'm telling you, it very strange to be Roxanne without any image. I don't even know what Roxanne was an image. Roy was an image. Roy was a big image. Roy was always trying to please people and trying to get people to love Roy because Roy was empty. And then Roy found Roxanne, and Roxanne said, hey, it's okay. And now Roxanne is not even Roxanne anymore. I'm just, I'm just is, it's wonderful. So on this journey of the now, the language of the now, to choose your own self is a very strange playground. It doesn't look anything like the monkey bars and the sandbox and the merry-go-rounds we had. The swings. Mm, the four square tether ball, it doesn't have that anymore. It doesn't have slides. It doesn't have the same thing. It doesn't have a place for mom and dad and a bench to sit and watch you. It. it doesn't have any of that. It's a whole new world, and you don't even understand the colors. You don't even understand how it feels. There's not even, it's not even warm or hot, cold. It's just something of a whole new freaking way to relate to reality. And it's very strange in this new playground we're finding. But I'm telling you, if you have an awareness of it, you must be it. You have to have that relationship, relationship, relationship to reality. You have to have that connection. Otherwise, it wouldn't be noticed. And you have it in you at all times. Every single now, you have a connection. And that new playground is uncertain. And it doesn't offer finites. It doesn't offer uh, ties off. It doesn't offer containers. 
It doesn't offer support and standards and staples you can rely on. It doesn't offer safety nets. It doesn't offer security. It doesn't make promises of freedom that's defended. It's unconditional. And it's a strange world. And I'm there. We all can be there together. Just by being this new this new self returned. Someone asked me a question, Dave, are you happier now that you have found this place? Not Roy, not Roxanne anymore. See, Dave, it's not happier in the idea of to attain happiness. It's happy because I've let go of what I thought happy was. See, happy was something to be pursued, as the Constitution says, the pursuit of happiness. The happiness is now. The happiness is always what we are. And it's not even happy what we think we are. It's beyond that measurement, but that still is a reliability we can relate to. See, once you take off all the things that create happiness in your mind of lack, then you're going to find happiness is what you are. It's something that's never need to be sought. It's your existence in and of itself. So I can say yes to that, but losing the images is not just Roy or Roxanne. It's the pursuit of something that you already are that's not need to be done, but just was never realized. Thank you. Cool, yeah. You're welcome, baby. I think it's beautiful, Roxy. I think it's Thank beautiful you, what you just said. And and I would I would agree with you about the dissolving of the self as in an in, in identification almost you have a name because you walk around. So it's easier when people don't say like, hey, you <laughs> 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 but right. at the same time, there's a, how do you say, and I see it in you since even when you first started channeling, just the, how do you call letting go of, of the need to identify with yes. anything. We identify because it's just convenient, but. It's what we know. It's what we're good at. Yeah. Until we like really nail down the telepathy thing and we can really be able to direct our thoughts right at the person and make sure that they hear us and we can continue. We probably will still stick with names. Plus names are fun, but it, right. it's just, I'll, I'll just share something with you. Years ago, I read a book and it, it was, um, how to Talk to God, it was Deepak Chopra. And in the first um, paragraph, and it was even the preface, he was saying how he just had struggled with finding a good pronoun for God. And I got stuck there, and I never read the rest of the book. <laughs> 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 but, I, but because I really, that really started my mind going, and I thought, how much by saying he, she, whatever, or God, or dad, or father, or sister, do we lock in definitions about what those things are? And they're so conditioned on our sort of preconceived notions. And, and I was like, yeah, there is no good pronoun for God. And so I did a lot of research trying to see if there was any other uh, people that didn't identify God as a pronoun, who didn't have that kind of identification and and but i think it's the same for people just if we can look at people without any kind of belief as to what we think that they should be based right. on anything that has to do with their packaging meaning their physicality their gender sure. gender stuff they got stuck on them or <laughs> it just kind of <laughs> it just happens to be there or or whatever it is and it's a really yeah, it's a very freeing uh, proposition. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. You know, what's funny is when I channeled that the other day, the last Thursday slides class, I had some entities come in. And there was two entities that came in. One was uh, Dolores Cannon and the other was Theo. But it wasn't them as the containment. Mm. They, they made the references like, I remember Dolores. I could be Dolores again, but I'm not Dolores. Dolores was an image way back there. Right. It was so, it was so beautiful. 
Right. Says we don't even have names. And there's something. And remember, there's no reason to direct telepathy, right. because we don't have to make sure they get it. Because if they're in our world, in thought, they don't have to be in our physical world. If there's a connection, then there's already the connection made. Right. There's no effort in what we are. I know that. We just don't know how to do it in remembrance yet. But as we journey in the now is to keep choosing ourselves and accept the reality of the error and stop trying to make reality in the perfection of pursuit. And -hmm. we're going to discover that we're enough. And that's priceless. (laughs) Are you talking Theo, the one that... um... So that uh, Abra- that Esther Hicks went to that that yes. yeah, yeah that's nice. that's the one yeah yeah cool and it was an exquisite class oh awesome. <laughs> it was just so we're much talking fun. about we'll, we'll us, we're talking about Roxy's Sly class and you can find that yeah. on her website odysseyofascension dot com dot com dot com <laughs> <laughs> Dave uh, has a question for you yes Dave. Hey, Roxy. Um, I'm wondering, uh, you seem to have a good grasp. I'm, I'm not sure if you're channeling right now, and that's why the information and vocabulary is so nice. Um, <laughs> but does Roxanne, um, by herself, have the same knowledge and know-how as you when you're channeling? Or, And if that's the case, what is the purpose of living if you are already everything and you know, like, everything, essentially? Well, well, first, there's a couple things in there, so let's break them down. First off, Roxanne channels just like you channel. Everybody channels. We channel our wholeness. But we also have the ability to channel because we have that idea of creation as a way to experience life. It's just an expression. So I can bring Osiphius in. I can bring uh, the idea of the uh, Essasani civilization, the Basar messenger, and pick a, a particular entity and, and, and channel that gestalt of the Essasani, or I can bring a Pleiadian in. And what it is, it's a connection. And bring Sly in or anybody. And it's just a connection. It's it's this energy that's a that's a truth. And this energy, me, that's a truth. And then we combine and create this we and create an experience. And the experience is for the self. So the purpose of life, now the answer the second is why it's not why, it's why not. Always look at the why nots, because we can. And then how you relate to that without purpose will show you the meaning that you've always been running over. It's not meaning as in to label meaning, it's meaningful because it's full of an experience. We don't have to have a purpose. Life is purposeful right now, that kind of idea. But it's very uncomfortable to get to relate to reality that way because we have to have ideology. I remember there was this reporter. You guys remember when the, uh, the, the eclipse happened and it shot across the United States? You know, the total sun eclipse or lunar eclipse, solar eclipse that eclipsed the sun, you know, and then people were in the path of the moon. It was a great experience. And there was this Republican, and I'll say that because he worked for Fox, maybe he wasn't a Republican, reporter, okay? And that's a label, and I understand that. But he kept on going to the people. And after it went over these people, he kept on going to the people. And he asked like 10 people, so now what? So now what? After the experience, so now what? So now what? So now what? Because he wanted to know why they just sat up there and let the moon cross them. Well, because they can. Because see, each individual world is in and of itself its own experience. And it cannot be compared to or measured by another because everyone that's measuring another world is measuring it through their interpretation. One man's trash, again, is another man's treasure. So, so the reason why we already know because we know all that is in the now. And now is forever, so we know and unknown the constant. I, I remember Ramta had said it once, and I think it was in the white book. <clears throat> We're always the known into the unknown. Taking the unknown into the known and taking the known into the unknown. And it's simultaneous. It's always in the now. We are everlasting and always knowing. Always knowing. So don't look at it for reasonality on why do we are even alive to have an experience as a physicality to know. Well, why not? Because I dare say you've had a hell of a life, Dave. You've had an exquisite life. You got gorgeous hair. You got a nice little beard. You look like a, a nice little lumberjack that I'd like to get my meat, <laughs> my, my, my hands on. <laughs> I would. Okay. So, so you're fun. 
you're an expression, you're an entity, you're something of awesomeness right? to be, to be beheld. And so you give me life as I give you life. And how we both relate to that experience of the now, that co-creation, the we that we are in every particular now is our experience of the everlasting. Okay. Make sense, babe? It does make sense. Thank you. You're welcome, <laughs> darling. Yeah. There you go. Lumberjack Dave. Now that's his name from now on. Oh, God. Don't do that. <laughs> Lumberjack, Lumberjack Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> 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 Hey, you know what? Quiet, you. What came to mind too, and it was something I'm studying in um, something else, but it was a really good statement. And I think you can definitely attest to this. How, if you think back to like 2012, when when all the channeling started bursting forth into the world, you yep. know, and yep. how there was one sort of message, and how it sort of evolved to now. Keep going. Keep going. So we, we woke up to, you know, that who we are and we started talking about things in terms of um, universal truths. But now as we've gone deeper and deeper into it, not only yeah. have we found out that, you know, we are one, we are everything, but now we're even finding out that we're nothing at the same time. Can you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, well, our I level, our ability to, con like, you can't walk up to, like, someone who's just woken up, you don't walk up to them and say, oh, and by the way, um, you are a multidimensional being. I am you. Right. you. You have to, it's like you spoon feed right. until you reach, it's just, can you maybe talk about how we've come from sort of the beginning of waking up and in deeper sure. the knowledge and sure. responsibility of it? I'd like to hear your perspective on it. I understand. I understand the idea of responsibility, but I don't think we have. See that. that that's what Maybe I. Maybe that's get, not right? the right word. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's cool. It's cool. We'll we'll play with that because I think that brings up this point that Bashar had said. Um, you know, we have the ability to respond, and it's not that we're responsible for waking people up. And that's the one thing that I know. My channeling has taught me that I don't need to tell people that they're gods because then I, I would have an approach of a preacher. And I think we've had enough of that. So what I do is I become myself and choose myself. And those who vibrate in my vibrational reality of likeness are inquisitive. And then we offer and we, we right. co-create and we exchange. Because I have the ability to respond to the now to give everyone what I am. Because if they're in my world and they're asking me a question about what this is, I tell them what it is. In that now, my way according to my heart. I never preface it in an idea of safety, security, or making it better or worse, or preventing anyone from going off the deep end because all of a sudden I told them they're a multi uh, dimensional being with, uh, you know, like a diamond faceted and they have a billion selves acting as one. It's like, whoa, you know? But if they're in my reality in the now, and that's the co created moment, then I speak my heart, my truth, and that takes care of it without needing to take care of it. Uh, and, and that's what I, you know, I love what Osipius had taught me very early. This is an effortless journey, Roxy. He wrote, he channeled uh, effortless gods very early on, 2014. I think I started in 13 and this one came in 2014. And just to relax and not make it so, uh, and as you know, and it's, it's, I think this group, this all these channelers who came online and there's more and more, you know, since me and you started, but back then, there's, you know, and we had what me, you, um, you know, Wendy Kennedy and Nora and Daniel Scranton and Rob Gauthier and uh, Daryl Anka and Abraham and uh, Jay Z Knight and uh, and the more and more uh, league, uh, level, of course, Carol, 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 and, and you know, Cryon and, and Sean Swanson and, right. and Lee Grant and, and Brad and Andronis and, and, and of course, yeah. uh, Brad uh, <clears throat> is it Brad Johnson. Brad, is that Brad, his last name? Brad Johnson, yeah. 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 God, Brad, I'm sorry. I just forgot your last name. I was, no, I always call him Brad. He's a drone. He's Brad Jonas Johnson. <laughs> right. Brad Jonas Johnson. Uh, so all these, and now now there's a whole new set of channelers out yeah. there. And it's the expansion of humanity. And mm -hmm. it's the way we're learning to play the, with each other. In whatever way we learn, whatever tool we employ, a truth, if you will, is the way we're doing it. And then when no, that truth no longer becomes valid, we have the 
pride swallowed, if you will, allowed the meek to come through and just say, you know what? This is my new truth. And just let that old way go. Because yeah. we're not we're not here to hold on to the rung of the ladder. We're here no. to climb. You know? Exactly. Oh, that's beautiful. So, yeah. 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 So uh, so I think I think it's it's really good uh, that we're doing it this way because I don't think there was a better way to do it, or I don't think there was a worse way to do it. Because if we're blinded and we're using our past experience to plan a future, then mm -hmm. we're going to be contained within that f plan. Right. I don't want to plan. I want to be. And that's what that's what I think what we're what we have done for ourselves. You mm -hmm. know, what all these great channelers, I'm just getting Nora and Wendy in my mind on how what they brought to the table, the beauty of that the yeah. co-creation connection um, and, and what they what they brought. And, and I think that was the allowability of, of the diversity of humanity to be something beyond itself. And that was a uh, cultivator. And then it start going here and here and here. And I think we'll just keep going. We're just, we're doing it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, we can actually look back now because it is what, seven, eight years on six. I don't know how long, but it's, it, it, there's a, there's I know definitely, I, I noticed this year, 2018, this shift, there's just a shift in, in, uh, yeah, I don't want to call it the realness of it. I don't want to say it hasn't been real. Before. How about, That's not how about the quality? The quality. Yeah. 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 It's so deep now and it's so yeah. real now where, where more people can, or they're not just listening to it, but they're grasping it and they're, they're springing out with their own channeling and they're, they're just, yeah. you know, and you and, can't line up all these people and have them just implicitly come out with all this information that is so similar. So I say collectively, another piece of the puzzle, another piece of the puzzle. It's so beautiful to see that like, you know, everyone's, the, the, the reason why there's so many channelers is because everyone's bringing their own perspective to talk. Own to authentic, people, that's it. Right, to talk to the right people that, that like you said, match the, the right vibration. Match yep. the vibration. That's yeah, it. it's really cool. It's so amazing. It is. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, <laughs> but if we didn't start, we're not here. So everyone right. just start, start right. your truth and see what happens. Take a chance on yourself. Hey, uh, Michelle's got a big question. Do you, can you read it in the chat or you well, want me to read it to well, you? Well, hang on. Before we do that one, actually, Rocco, before my mom has a question. Let's oh, go, go, to go. go, Rocco. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Is she there? Hey, Roxanne. Thank Hi. you so much. Hi. You're welcome, baby. You speak from the heart and how yeah. you say it is just, even more important than what you say sometimes it seems to me you know but um my question is um uh, i think i do have an answer but i wanted your look at it uh, sure. i sort of analyzing the programming of my um younger years growing up in uh, ussr there was a lot of things that uh <laughs> you know was put on young people at that time from oh, very much so you know it's it's kind of a layered thing because your parents are programmed and you're programmed by your parents and by everything else around you sure generations um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah i'm just wondering what is the the benefit of doing that to someone so young who doesn't have a muscle uh -uh. To, no 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 to it's not a, it's not a benefit <laughs> stop see you're starting yeah. to blame already okay See, that's what you can't do. It's not a benefit. This planet is not benefit or worse meant. It's neither. It's an experience of separation and it's creation unwielded. It's not controlled. See, your set of parents, okay? Now, let, yeah. let, let's say your set of parents put on you certain beliefs that you are upset about. But over here in this idea country, this set of parents put no beliefs on this child. And this child says, everything is fine. You go, no, everything sucks. <laughs> like, that's unique experience to you. That's all it is. It it's, is not, it's not a purpose. It's not an accident. It just is. Containment is very easy to try to find a meaning behind it so you can forgive them or forgive yourself or have some kind of closure or clarity, which offers peace of mind. But if you do this, just accept reality is, yeah. then there's nothing to do about it. Because right now, you're fine. 
But in yeah. time, you're still targeting and upset at the benefit or the, the or the non-benefit to the way they were. Yeah. It's just generations. That's all it is. It's humanity <sighs> evolving itself and understanding. Look, you could have been in a born time. Let's go back maybe 300 years. You, yeah. the person you know yourself as born 300 years, me and you aren't having this conversation about the possibility of knowing your God. So you chose the time of the great awakening to have that experience. So that's your master choice to be here now to understand mm -hmm. that you don't have to keep vibrating the same thing that your parents did to you, to your yeah. children mm -hmm. and giving them that idea generations to carry on. What you master can do today is accept and allow. Mm -hmm and cultivate your reality through choice of love and allow your children to blossom and mm -hmm. don't clip them. Don't clip their wings, cultivate mm -hmm. them. Don't protect mm -hmm. them, let them fly because they're the next generation that's going to. The, the hippie generation changed reality. It was a big movement. This next generation is not the millennials, the millennials kids. They're really gonna rock the world because they're not going to put up with limitations. That's mm -hmm. why we have Trump right now in the world. So humanity, our generation, the millennials, this generation, and not just I mean, generation spans 300 years now. Okay, just know mm -hmm. that. So this generation is looking at this limitation and going, this is what we don't want. Awesome. So now each individual starts to choose what you want, what mm -hmm. they want. So you yourself get to choose what? my life instead of my life was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accept it let it go get mad at them but they forgot mother f them to the oh, no end hate them if you must let your feelings be alive through you don't avoid what you are you're a god and nothing is conditioned in reality so let everything become you and then this is it this is it the quality is going to change mm -hmm. The way you relate to it is going to change and you can let go of that anger and mm -hmm. that pain and that victimization because if you keep imaging yourself that way, then you're going to continue that vibration because mm -hmm. remember what we said, the universe doesn't speak English, it doesn't speak mm -hmm. Russian, it doesn't speak Dutch, <laughs> it speaks vibration, it doesn't, yeah. speak pity, it doesn't speak hope, it doesn't speak dreams, it speaks vibration. So if you are containing yourself in a victim motif, then you're going to attract the reality that gives you the same potential to be a victim to the self so you can contain yourself because that's your truth. Therefore, the reality is your truth. Whatever you choose creates your world. Ta-da! Make sense? Wow. So let it go. It let it go. Be that now and let it be, let it be painful. I've been a victim. I had, I had things that happened to me. Okay? But I can't get yeah. mad at the people that did that because they were at that time their truth. That was their truth. I'm mean, gonna. I can't hold someone accountable for their truth. If I hold everyone accountable for their truth, then we are always what we have been. And yeah. look at what we are. We're not harmony. We're separation. I've uh, I've made a a, a big uh, leap from where I was. I actually see a lot of be experience i think that certain glimpses of it are more descriptive than books and books um, about that time or about that uh, way of life and yeah i yeah, appreciate yeah. it yeah. i appreciate it um Good. just because it's struggling because i was too young to actually be in a position to it doesn't matter, but see, <laughs> that's it. Uh, you're doing it again. You're going right back to the victim. I know, I know. It's really easy. Remember what we said? It's very easy yeah. to speak the language of limitation. So if you want to fight for your limitations and say, I was too young and it was in no position to make a difference, who cares? If you mm -hmm. want to hold on to that, then go ahead. And that'll be your life because you're the creator of your reality. So if whatever you mm -hmm. interpret as that becomes your truth and that's your reality and that's how you're going to feel about it. So the rest mm -hmm. of your life, you're going to feel shitty about what happened. Then go ahead. Why? Because you're God. Why? Because you can. So is you identity and choice. programming. So I'm what? So sorry. Identity what? and programming are, are pretty linked then, huh? Well, of course. Yeah. 
The wow. programming is what you're taught and you covet it as an identity. But you yeah. yourself used to be something and you let go. And that's what most teenagers do. Most teenagers try to shed mom and dad's coveting. That's why they're teenagers because they're out of control because mom and dad says, no, no, you can't. You're not supposed to do this. Blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. most of them get outlandish and say, look, I'm I'm starting to become my own self. And then we say, oh, it's maturity. It's they're going through puberty. And we make up all these labels because we're just busy with limitation. Fine. That's great. But what they're doing is they're trying to escape from what you have given them as a known. But they're not they, they see this escape through outlandish. But what they are is beginning to become aware of their own worthiness returned. And then mm -hmm. they fall into certain patterns, which most people do, but not anymore. See, that's what this great awakening is about. We're all here being different. The differentiation is ourselves different, not difference in image, not jumping on board with the current fad, not jumping on board with comfort in numbers, being the individual singularity, the I am that we are, to know that we are worthy of being chosen to exist, for God's mm -hmm. sakes. So get to know sense. you instead of messing around with the distractions of what you've been and what happened to you. But if you like it, then keep it because it's yours and it's your <laughs> truth and you're allowed to. Thank you, Roxanne. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome, babe. All right. Well, goodbye. No, no, no. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, right here. Yeah, I'm going to mute it. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Michelle's gonna uh, has her question. She'd like to ask. Oh, she's gonna herself. ask it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna read it, and then it might have some addendums. Hi, Michelle. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm really happy that you're here today. I was excited. Wonderful. wonderful. Good to see so, you. So good to see you. Also, I am. Um, Going through, so I recently had a move and I keep putting myself in situations where I'm kind of the observer and I keep learning new things, like new levels. And um, I was on this really amazing trajectory of knowing, like watching, being the watcher, playing the game, kind of like manifesting and everything was like, really flow in flow I was really in flow and then what will happen or what seems to happen is because if I'm creating my own reality then I put situations in my life to give me another lesson problem no. is my, <laughs> no. no okay <laughs> you do not put things in your life to give you a lesson there's no lesson there's nothing to learn see that's an approach that's uh -huh. a humanistic thing of limitation. I'm less than to learn more than. You're not less than, you're forgotten. You're never less. You don't have to earn your way back to Godship. You are a God. But what you do is a point of view that creates your reality of vibration, and then you choose the truth about the details of your nows that give you the experience. So, okay, so you're on this great trajectory, and all of a sudden you go back to what you have always done, correct? Is that where you're going? Right, basically. So then I get stuck in a. You're not stuck. Uh, You're just not what, choosing what your feels choice. like. Yeah. So I feel physically like pressed down and mentally pressed down. Um, but see, you know what? I've known you for how many years? Three, at least. Okay. And you're still doing the same thing I know you then, Michelle. I know. That's why it's so irritating. <laughs> it's not irritating. You're just not choosing your truth. You just won't choose to let go. Listen, you're not special, and I'm not going to let you make yourself special. Uh -huh. Don't make the excuse that you can't do this because you can't because you're a god. You're an unlimited god, but you just don't want to choose to know that self because here's what's happening with you on these idea cycles. is you come to a point of know you're allowed to choose your worthiness, but you make an excuse not to, and that's just enough to get this other excuse excuse enacted and you do it again and you do it again and you go ahead and cycle yourself because okay. here's what it is that's the way you love now don't think for a second just listen very closely okay, okay? empty your mind you love that because that's the way you relate to reality and self-preservation you're so used to having the cycle so you can talk to your daughter and have your daughter have drama and then you have drama. And then you can talk to people around you that misery loves company so you can have that because that's what you're very used to. It's not that you're really mad at it. You're not really frustrated at it. You're excited because you have the same reality that you exist in as what you were that gives you your identity. 
Because like I said before, you're very, very uncomfortable with actually leaving Michelle. Because Michelle has been this pain in the ass to herself, pain in the ass to other, hope for others, dream for others, teacher of others, and failures of others. And you keep going. It's like a, okay, remember, you know, a dog chasing a bark car, a dog barking at a car, chasing a car, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's the dog. And when it catches the car, it doesn't know what to do. Because I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't. I got, I got to go find another car. See, we always get to a point of like, oh, my God, everything is perfect. It can't be perfect. Let me go fuck it up again. Because that's the way you relate to reality. That's the truth you need to see. Mm -hmm. And that cannot be given in a process. It cannot be given in a mantra. It cannot be given in a clearing. It cannot be given. It has to be chosen. Mm -hmm. Are you in the moment that says, you know what? Here's the point where I'm not going to say this is dramatic. I'm not going to reach out and seek my pity through other people's demise. I'm not going to be at the expense of others. And today, it's just today, just today, not in a plan. Just today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be acceptable to me. And I'm going to choose my worthiness right now. See, when you validate what you have done, that's your truth to keep it around. No now has anything to do with another now. That's the conjecture of time to keep congruency of time in and of itself for the experience mm -hmm. of this dimension, this fourth dimension, 3D world with time, time being the fourth additive. So you're very used to that. So you go back and say, well, this is it and this is it and I did it again. So that means this now is interpreted as that vibration offering you the same reality to choose in comfort or to choose in uncomfort. If you choose the scary, you won't validate that again. You let it go and your vibration will return. But again, very few will go this far to actually choose their godship. Most will choose the journey of expression to be experienced to remember. Here's the trick of it all, guys. It all can be chosen in the now by anybody. I can tell you that. There's nothing you need to do to know your whole except choose it. And any filter that comes up and keeps you separated in that moment of choosing your godship is a self that needs to be expressed and accepted. That self that says, you are miserable. And you're going, you're right, I am miserable. I love you, misery. Come here, baby. And you accept that misery back into the whole of you. So it no longer has to be objectivized as an identity outside of you. So now you're not this point of view of misery. You're this point of view of accepting misery. And then it comes back home and says, I'm good. I'm not miserable anymore. And see, that's another piece of the puzzle. And it comes in the now, not the now of time, the now of journey. So discover yourself by being your truth. Now, you can keep doing the ideas of the pity parties. You can keep doing the ideas as the woe is me and woe is the other people and telling people what they're doing wrong and being a preacher and, and trying to get them to fix themselves as well as fix yourself. And you're very good at it. And there's, listen, very closely to this part. There's nothing wrong with that. See, that's an expression that has lived. That's a portion of creation that's immeasurable. It's the tapestry of life. It is perfection. But see, the choice is that you can choose to write your own story in the now. That's what each God gets to do. We are individual truths. We are our choice. So now you can discover what you have been to what you can be. And it's all done in the now. Okay, darling? I think so. <laughs> Don't think about it. Can I offer this? Don't think. Because thinking has given you that. Thinking is giving you measurement. Thinking is giving you rights and wrongs and ups and downs and what I should and what I can. Why can't I just stop thinking and be? I mean, Bashar said it in this tiny little excerpt more than 30 years ago. There's literally no reason to think on this planet. And I read that. I read that part. It was, it was along with what Karen liked, the rung of the ladder. It was a written thing. It wasn't even a channel thing. I read it. It says, you don't have to think on this planet. And I was like, what do you mean you don't have to think? And I was like, and then I heard, you don't have to think, Rox. 
relax. Just be the now. Mm-hmm. Try it. Stop okay. trying to think so much on how to fix yourself because you're not broken. You've never been broken. But you validate yourself as that, and you are a master of your own reality. So therefore, you get the mi- vibrational equation that gives you the emotional connection that says, I'm not enough. I suck. I'm miserable. Because you're God, and you get to. So don't think. Be, and you shall see. Try it. Because what you have done hasn't worked. (laughs) It's working what you want, but it's not working what you really want to um, understand about yourself, the remembrance. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Booyah. Booyah, yeah. Alex has a Booyah, yeah. (laughs) It's like kumbaya, but booyah, yeah. You were so funny. You make me funny. I'm not funny any other week. But but in here, we're allowed to be funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, you any last week wasn't funny. This week, I'm just freaking hilarious. We're <laughs> funny. <laughs> Alex has a comment or something. Hey, Alex. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I wanted to share uh, my experience related to accepting the now and oh, perfect. in order yeah. to manifest, I learned it from you. I, I think you were channeling the Tealies and you were saying like, I love uh, it, it, yeah, it was great. Uh, if you want something, that means there is a lack. If yes. you accept what you have in, in the now moment, then the thing that you originally wanted comes to you. Oh, yeah. And then I said to myself, would I be honest to myself if I were to say, oh, I love my crappy nine-year-old webcam. <laughs> and I was like, pissed, you know, I, how can I love this freaking webcam? No, I couldn't be honest to myself. And then I... I said, I I didn't have any money to buy a better one. And then I realized, oh, my God, I used that webcam to speak my truth. I made my first video for YouTube about my spiritual awakening. And people were coming to me and thanking me, you know, for uh, explaining things. They they thought they were the only one who, who had this, like incredible experience last year when when i i thought i was going to die you know and then i said oh my god i freaking love this webcam i love this webcam and you know what happened two days after that i found i found a three times cheaper camera than it usually was this webcam and i bought it and it was a manifestation two days later and oh my God, you and that's just <laughs> one example. You helped me, I don't know, five or six times. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> so I just wanted to share, maybe this helps someone. Okay. Oh, it does. And here, let me show you something. See, we believe we have to manifest something through money or some kind of happening. But see what Achilles was telling us, it's already in the now. It's just not in the now that you're at. So you, you already, what you have now is what you've always wanted. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. That's your highest vibration connection. This now is what we want. So what we want in time is going to come because we've already know it in the now. So that's when you let it to come. So what happened is in your perfect world, you created a camera. It's not on everyone else's world. Remember, it's your world. That was three times as less, and you had the abundance to get that. And that's the world of your bubble moment. It's never everybody else's world. In other words, someone couldn't come in to that vibration and see that that camera is three times less as well. Unless they were there in your world at that same time. Yeah. It was uniquely your bubble in the now. They may have the same experience in a different now, but your now was that. So don't worry about what else everyone has or doesn't have. You are now your world. So that shows you that you create a reality that's based upon your vibration and you allowed that vibration to come to you in the miraculi giving it the miracles Mm -hmm. coming and giving it to you and say here and that's how i live my life and that's what my life is every day i can't believe i get to have this much freaking fun every day but i went through the angst in this in the anxiety i went through the choices to not reach and preach I accepted that humble to the self and I allowed the now and I accepted everything I had and I fell in love with the relationship with my reality that I could never, never believe. I could never, ever imagine the world I live in that is so beautiful, but it's nothing that I thought I wanted. 
but it's everything that I ever needed. And it's priceless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I say what I tell to myself every day. Everything what's needed will be provided. So I don't have to worry oh, yeah. about anything. I have everything. I mean, I'm alive. Let's go about your nails. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's go about your nails. Oh, yeah. let me give this. I remember a few times people would invite me to go to places. So like, hey, Roxy, you want to go to dinner with us or something like that? Because, you know, when I was first starting out, I had a group of people that come to my channelings and, and you know, they were live and uh, they come on the Wednesdays and the Fridays, but we just do Fridays now. And they still come in. And I remember at the time when I was like dirt poor, you know, I had just odyssey of ascension and donations was my only means of income. So people would invite me and the first fear in my mind is like, oh my God, I don't have the money, you know, but it always took care of itself in the now. You'll be amazed. Yeah. So don't deny yourself the offerings of creation because, see, people give you things. It's not because they want it for condition. If they're giving it for a condition, you already know. Say, no, that's a conditioned reality. People go, well, I'm going to do this for you. So you get this, but just remember what I did. I said, no, 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 you can keep your conditioning. But people that are offering through their beauty, they says, hey, Rox, you want to go out? I said, yeah. And they do it, and they have, the whole world takes care of itself. Or say, hey, Roxy, I want to give this to you. You know, I used to be embarrassed about getting donations because I always felt I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough for that to earn their donations. And then I remembered something. I remember something that um, Sylvester taught me. Okay? Actually, um, yeah. He said, look, if you're going to deny someone the gift of giving, and you're denying them their own beauty to themselves, why the hell would you ever do that? And I was like, oh, yeah. Why would I stifle someone offering themselves their own beauty? Just because they're giving doesn't mean it's a give and take reality. You see, that's polarity. Mm -hmm. Now that's polarity. So, so when someone offers you that, so when you find that perfect sale or the, you know, the perfect thing where someone says, hey, you know what? I'm not using this here. I remember when I moved into this apartment with Tommy Jean, when I first actually moved in with Tommy, we were looking around for uh, some kind of uh, bed. Uh, we were thinking because it was an efficiency, uh, a futon. You know, we can have a couch and then change it into a bed. And I was like, okay, perfect. You know, so we kind of like started to do it. And then I said, you know what? Leave it alone. And two days later, my friend Debbie goes, hey, Roxy, I got this futon. We're not doing anything. Would you like it? And I was like, yeah, that would be perfect. And it's sitting right there. You know, I still have it. See, it's that perfect way of creation. Then when I got this apartment, we moved over here. We had no bed. And then Angel goes, hey, man, I got a queen bed that's in storage. You want it? Yeah. So I got the frame. And Debbie and James had a mattress because they replaced the old mattress in the other room and they said would you like the old mattress and we bought a new one for this room and i said yeah and i remember the mattress because i slept on it when i used to watch their dogs at their house i was like yeah of course i'll take it see it always comes in the now and i will not neglect what reality wants to give me because i am my own world and so when you start to approach life from that way that you're allowed to be a god and you're allowed to accept things that they're not conditioned because you know the vibration of conditioning you know it. You're very well versed in it. And you're like, oh, no, I'm not going to do this because I'm desperate. I'm not going to say, oh, thank you. I'll pay you back. No, none of that. So you just accepted the awesomeness. And that's what really is. It's very scary to be so awesome. See, now you're starting to get the awesomeness. You're getting the others like, oh, my God, all this great things happen. Yes. And then you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't deserve all this awesome. I need to pay some of this back. No, you don't. No, you don't. You just keep accepting, and that's when you start to remember, oh, yeah, I'm God creating my own world. Just because this conscious mind isn't saying I need a suitcase full of money or I need this stuff doesn't mean that. It means I have everything in the now that's perfect, and you will have that, and that's what you're starting to see. So here's what you do. You keep accepting it and be awesome to yourself. Don't be in too much awe like, oh, my God. Say, okay, you know what? This is good. I accept I'm awesome. <laughs> and when you accept it, you become the reality, the vibration. And the world speaks to you. Yeah, keep great. Journey, keep rocking out. Thank it's you. Fun. You're welcome. We got some next. Karen, are you in the bathroom? <laughs> Hang on, I think. Rocco, did you have something? Unmute yourself, babe. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I, I had a question. Is it What's that, possible? Man? Is it possible to enter another person's reality? Well, you're in my reality, but you can't enter from my point of view. Me and you are in the same reality just because we're not in the physical reality in the same space time square, if you will, doesn't mean we're not in the same reality. We're in the same here and now. So uh, the idea of me becoming your set of eyes, I can look right through you as you, but I'm still looking at as me. So you're always going to interpret reality from your point of view, no matter where you position yourself in all reality. I asked them the question. Hello. Uh, okay. So, yeah. That's Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, that's nice to know. Thank you for answering the question. You're welcome, sweetie. And thank you for joining in on this awesome ride. Cool? Very I'm good. Cool. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> you're a little, you're a little Fonzie. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my microphone wouldn't let me unmute. The cord came out. It was like, we don't detect a microphone. <laughs> so I wasn't able to. I'm like, you're like, are you there? I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> like I wanted there. to tell you something about Go uh, ahead. a year ago or some kind of crap like that. I don't remember because it's now all the time runs together. I know. Times are like, and they're all emergent. Woo. But I ever since it. around 2013, I've lived in this sort of vacuum of time and uncertainty about money and things. And I had to let it go. You know that I, we've had this conversation before. Sure. And I remember driving one time and I was thinking, I was calculating, like, I was like, I need this amount of money every month. And I heard, we know exactly how much money you need every month, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> And I was, because I was telling them, I'm like, I need this amount of money and blah, blah, blah. And, and they're I will like, tell you stuff we, comes. We know. Yeah. Stuff just comes out of the, it's, it's amazing. Stuff just comes out of the, the uh, I don't know where it comes from. And I'm happy that it shows up, but just stuff you wouldn't expect just plops down at your door. Absolutely. I, I need Every a day. refrigerator. I've needed, I had needed a new refrigerator for many years. And finally, I was like, I'm going to buy a refrigerator. And so I bought a refrigerator with like the most discount refrigerator you could buy. You know, like was, it was like, and I thought, this is a great refrigerator. I'm so happy. But I would really like a bigger refrigerator. <laughs> and so, because I got it and it was great because it wasn't like spilling water everywhere. But all of a sudden, my neighbor says to me, we're moving to America. I just bought this refrigerator. Do you want it? I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I'll I do. It. I will take this new improved giant refrigerator that I want. And then what happened is I took that refrigerator. I said to the woman who's a friend of mine, do you want my refrigerator? She said, yes. She said, I need a new refrigerator. I said, here's a brand new refrigerator. And she oh watches my, my dog. God. She watches my dogs. And she said, you know what? Don't even pay me for watching your dogs. I'll just take the refrigerator. She turned around with her old refrigerator and said to her friend who lived across the way, whose refrigerator was being held together by duct tape, do you want my refrigerator? <laughs> Look at that. So this one, this one what refrigerator. For? Yeah, it was incredible. Just stuff like that has been happening. I, I needed a new hot water heater. I brought the guy over and he said to me years ago, Karen, you got to replace this thing, you know. And he, he would say to me every year, when, do you, when are you going to replace it? I'm like, how many more years can I get out of it? He's like, I don't know if you can get a few months out of it. Somehow it stayed alive for many years. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it stayed alive. So clear. Fine, clear, yeah, pretty much. Finally, he all of a sudden uh, sends me a message. I've just taken a brand new hot water heater out of someone's house who was too small. Do you want it? I'll install it for, I mean, literally like a gotcha. third of the price that I would have paid for it. And I was like, yep, I'll yep. take it. You know, and it just happened to be exactly the amount of money that I had that I could put towards something like that. Just stuff like that just happens all, all the time. The time. All the it's, time. it's so nice. And you think, okay, what do I want now? <laughs> what do I need now? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It just, it just comes. It just comes. Uh, also, like Stephanie just wrote, uh, I currently need a new refrigerator, LOL. Um, he has a it, question. It, Go ahead, yeah, Steph. Yeah, it, it, it's going to come. It will. Go ahead, Steph. 
Unmute yourself, darling. Sorry right. about that. Hi. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm, I have no complaints to speak of, thank you. Uh, All I right. do need a well, there you That's go. not a complaint. <laughs> so I am thinking that there was a period for both of you that really presented itself as a an extreme challenge even in your thought process to go from the fear based, what am I going to do if I don't work or if I follow my yep. highest excitement? Yep. And you find that, like Michelle was mentioning early, some, earlier, sometimes you come back to like a comfort zone and continue in that mode until you can now take another step in um, releasing some measure of fear because. You know, you, for me, I didn't wake up, so to speak, until about four years ago. And so I have 50 years or so of being in a certain mindset, being in a certain um, thought pattern process. Right. Keep and going. While it's, been, it's been easier to let go of some things and um, it, it, it's been easier to let go of some things than others. And, yeah. and so I'm just curious, uh, I'd like to hear from both of you in those times where, I mean, and you spoke to it some, but from that personal moment in time when it was just you and your quiet room and your personal thoughts, how did you find yourself starting to come okay. out of that All place. Right. Meditation, was it just stop, stop, cut stop, it? stop, 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 stop. Thank you, you so much. Yeah. All right. You're you're okay. trying very hard to get an answer. So relax first off, okay? Because you're just you're, curious about your experience. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm I'm gonna give it to you, but you're always adding more words in to make sure that we give you the what you what you're after. We know you're after something. So what you're after is the now. It's not how we did it and one belief was greater than the other see it's just how it happened in each now so each individual idea is unique so but there there are parallels and comparisons if you want to make them that and so we understand that but listen listen to this part so if i needed money and i didn't know okay so at one time um i'm 51 i was a smoker and i smoked for 35 years and I quit last year. I've been a little bit more than a year since I quit. But when I had cigarettes and I had no job and I was like running out of cigarettes, I was scared to death. So I had choices in the moment to call a friend, ask for money. If I didn't have any money, I seemed to be getting closer or something like that. So I didn't take action on the fear. See, that's what you got to know. You got to take action to allow. And so no action was needed to prevent the what the mind said is going to happen. I'm going to run out of cigarettes and I'm not going to have any and I'm going to have a conniption fit. Okay. Because what happened is every single time I needed those, those ideas, and whether it was cigarette, coffee, food, gas for my truck, payments, anything, it always came. Like Karen said, okay, Karen said this. She goes, we know how much you need. And I never heard it put that way, so that was exquisite. Because you are your own world. You know. You don't have to tell you because you have created this. You're dreaming here. So you are dreaming of you. So you know you. That's what you got to trust. The only way to experience that is not to fall back, if you will, on the reliability of the process to prevent a scary future that's not happening now. I remember I had two cigarettes left and I woke up in the morning and I smoked one and then it was like in the day and I had nothing going on that day. I had no channeling. I was just first started a channel. Um, it was like think of Thursday. Um, no, it was a Tuesday um, and I had nothing to do. Channeling was tomorrow and nothing to do. And I had no gas in my truck, a little bit of gas and just enough maybe to get to the store and back, but I had no money. I had nothing. There was nothing in my PayPal account because I was just starting to take donations. And I didn't even have a website for, for Rob Gauthier 
helped me create a website about, you know, I think it was about two months or two weeks. No, but two months after this particular guy, I think the time I'm remembering. And I said, okay, I have nothing. And I got up and it was like three hours later and I was like, I need a cigarette because I, I smoked at least once an hour, you know? So I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then a little voice inside my head said, smoke the cigarette, Roxy. It's okay. We got you. So I had to trust that moment. So I had that. And right after I was done, Wink calls me, a friend. He goes, hey, Roxy, I'm in the neighborhood. Do you need me to pick up some cigarettes or food or anything? And I said, yeah, can you give me a couple packs of my cigarettes? And she goes, yep. And that was it. So that was one time, but I'm seeing, that didn't that didn't solve it in my mind. It didn't solve it yet, Stephanie. It was one thing of okay, it's cool, that works. But then it the fears came up again and again and again and again and again in different fashion. But it was still all a base core belief of lack that I have to do this in order to attain these things. But every time, every single time. I would not act upon the fear and trust me, the miracle showed up without fail. And if you look at your life, you've never been without either. You're here and now and everything is fine. There's things of time that don't say you're fine, but here and now you're perfect. So that's how we journeyed. I chose in the now to not be the fear, to not take action to prevent the unknown future that my mind says is scary. I took the action of I deserve this life. Does that make sense? Yes, very good. Very That's good. how I did it. And it was scary. Oh, yeah. I had angst. I would MF the universe like, what the hell's going on? And then Ocyphius or Sly would go, is anything wrong right now, Roxy? And I was like, no. And they go, then shut up. Be a big baby. Go watch some TV or something. Go do something. I didn't have a TV on when I was at that time. They said, go do something. Go for a walk. I don't care. Just stop your crying. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and, then I, and then I got used to being God because it's very difficult to get used to being the God that you, of whole. We're very good at the God of limitation because everything we do is godly. It's our choice of our creation, but it's how we relate to it. So that's how I did it. Karen, what about you? Um, well, two things come to mind because not so long ago, um, I had the realization of the you being you that comes to you. Um, I, I, I know that we're God and I know that when I channel, I know that I'm God. Um, but the, but the actual description of it and how it really manifests, even for me, I'm still in the realization phase of it. And, and I was giving a channeling to a guy and he was talking about how he had had, a, he had almost been killed in a car accident. And just right at the last moment, he got the information to, you know, turn left or turn right or something. Right. And he was saying, was that my angels? And I had a similar experience when I was about 19 years old, I was coming up a bridge um, I was coming on the on-ramp and I kept hearing, just slow down, just really slow down. And I was, I had no resistance to it. And I just thought, okay. And then it said, pull into the median. And the median was like on the right side. And I just did it, which was weird because it was late at night. And I thought, well, this is kind of weird, but okay, I'll do it. And I just stopped my car in the median as I was coming on a curve. So it was a blind curve going onto a bridge. And right at the moment I stopped coming the wrong way, being chased by a police car at high speed was a car. And had I not pulled over, which I thought I was playing a game with myself, <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. I would have been, I would have surely been, if not killed, hurt very badly. And it, because right. it would have, and I, I was like, wow, that had to be angels. And for years, that's what I thought. And so when I was doing the channeling, this guy was asking the question and what Theo said to him was, it's not that it was angels. You can say it was angels, but it was sure. you coming yes. back to you. It was the multidimensional future you who knows you coming back to save you. And anytime there's intercession into your life, it's always you coming back to you because you know what you need. And it might be your future life. It might be a higher dimensional you manifesting as an angel. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't it's, matter. So it's still you. Because there's the part of us that doesn't always have 
this clear vision of ourselves as God. So we call upon Jesus who knows who he is. Jesus knows he's God. We call upon angels who know who they are. So right. that's our permission slip in, in that believing to come back to us. So in the, in the trusting now, I'm just trusting that I don't want anything but the best for myself. And I'm trusting that whatever I need will be there right in that moment. And sometimes maybe I think it's fun to wait till the very last second for something to show up because then the anticipation and the excitement is really on the edge, you know? Oh, maybe. it is edgy. <laughs> so, so, you know, so, so sometimes it happens. And the other thing, someone gave me some advice. It wasn't, I think, it wasn't channeled, but I would think it was just higher advice. And the person said to me, never ask how. Just ask, what is the next step? What do you want me to do now? If it's just wait and relax, it's wait and relax. If it's go to the corner, you know, go to the corner of the street, then it's go to the corner of the street. But stop asking how, because the how is the control. The how yeah. is wanting to see. You know, we, we came into this world with these sort of coverings. They call them in Hinduism tattvas. And it's the sort of levels of forgetfulness we have as we've descended through into manifestation. And in this manifestation, we have the most coverings where we play the game of not knowing. We play the game of, you know, not instant manifestation. But if we let go of that, we also let go of, we don't even have to let go of the tattvas really because we can be continually surprised, but we can always just still have the trust just to know that you will always take care of you. In the now. In the now. Not in time. No. In the now. In the now, in the now. And so if you're really struggling with trying to, because the angst is what gets you, you know, waking up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, crap, you know, I've got this yeah. much in my bank account and I've got this much month. Scary. It's scary. And the, the now thing is just to, to just stay in the now moment and get into the appreciation of your, uh, your abundance. Start thinking of all the things that are going well. You know, you've got feet, you've got hands, you know, most of us, you've got clothes to put on, you've got food to eat, whether you like it or not, the food, all those things. And then you start to realize that, you know, everything is, is there for you that you need. And so if that's what you're focused on, that's what you will continue to receive. And we have all of us a superpower that we don't even realize is just that we can choose to focus on whatever we want yeah. and we will get whatever we focus on. So we can really, really take that moment to switch what we're focused on and to choose it and to choose it and to choose it. So that's, that's how, you know, that's how it's going and it's getting easier and easier to do that because I'm trusting it more and more. Every now I trust it. Yeah. The more actually, well, the thing is to be honest. Oh, so, sorry. So the thing is, Stephanie. For the most part, you are. You have everything you need. It might be that you don't have a hundred euros or dollars to pay a phone bill, but you've got a whole house manifested around you. You've got clothes on your back manifested around you. You have food in your refrigerator manifested around you. You've got so much of yourself that's some of that that's working that you just. Have, you're so used to it, you don't even have to choose it anymore because it's like in default mode. So now it's just now you're getting even more selective on the other defaults that you need to put in place that you choose it so much of the time that it just becomes a flow that hasn't been cut off from anything. Right. Yeah. That's what I am um, getting better at because most of the time I am in the flow but when one of those um fear-based thoughts come in I make a conscious effort not to entertain it but I found that it is still for some things a conscious effort it's not necessarily um just the, the flow that I'm normally in but you can also accept it though don't 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 be 
if, if, if a fear-based reality comes in, don't try to change it. Don't try to get rid of it. Don't try to escape it and don't get mad at it. Initially, if you need to get mad at it, get mad at it. I have a, one of the guys, he's like, my thoughts keep coming back and I hate him. And I said, well, then hate him, please. <clears throat> hate him all you want. And then understand him from a relationship of accepting that you hate them. You hate your thoughts. Good. Be God of that way to relate. Don't be a separatist. Be an exception. So you accept that idea of that fear again, and it's something that's no longer to be focused on once you start accepting it every time, and then it's not there to focus because it's not there as something objectified. It's been accepted. And when you, it becomes you, see, that's a lot of people miss the idea of the mirror. Abraham's idea of the mirror taught, you know, this mirror is like, oh, this guy's an asshole, so I'm an asshole. It's not that. Just because I accept him as an asshole, but I'm not an asshole. I'm going to let him be what it is. So my thought says, you need to do this. I say, great, I should. You're right, absolutely, but I'm not going to. I accept you for what you are, but I'm not going to choose that fear. Although the emotional equation says angst, anxiety, and worry, I still do my nows. And my nows are perfect. Time is scary, but not anymore. Because I took the journey to accept that the nows are perfect. Take the now journey. Accept all of yourselves that expose and say, hey, you know what? You should be obligated. You're not supposed to laugh at a funeral. You should be respectful. You're not supposed to do this in front of these people. You're uh, supposed to go to work. You're supposed to be responsible to these people in your life. And you're going, you're right. I should. I know. I love you for that point of view. However, not today. Today I'm choosing the vibration of worthiness. And that's when you start to see that all these fears that your mind's telling you, those selves that are just on a default program, like Karen said, are not going to be the reality because the vibration matches your worthiness, not your unworthiness. Take that journey, okay, darling? Perfect. You're unmuted, I think. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, now I'm on. You're good. Yeah. 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 You're welcome, darling. I think Rocco had a few things to he wanted to share. Rocco, did he see there? Oh yeah. I have this interesting story that shows like how the the universe works. So okay, so you know how when you focus on something really hard. Then all of a sudden, one day you get it. Well, that's what happened to me. I uh, so roosters are one of my favorite animals, and I paid a lot of attention to like researching about roosters and like, all that kind of stuff. I, I was really interested in roosters, and so uh, until one day I actually got a rooster. Like here's <laughs> But here's the interesting thing about it. Okay, so the universe does things in a very clever way. And at that <laughs> time, my pet cat was lost. Because I had a pet cat at the time. But don't worry, my cat came back after a while. But for the couple of days, my cat was gone. They usually do. We were looking for my cat. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere... The rooster walks. Uh, a rooster walks right in front of us. <laughs> we gave it a couple of sunflower seeds, and uh, just to feed it. it. And I think the rooster was lost because it seemed like no one else owned it. And like there, there was no like place where there were a whole bunch of other chickens. Like right. It, like seriously, like there was just that one rooster, and right there in your was, world. Yeah, we thought it was lost, and so I I picked it up and and held it, and I I tried to calm it down, and it it's it was a really loud rooster because roosters are really loud, so you got to be aware of that if you ever think about raising <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but I'm still happy because. Not well, you got to experience it. Yeah. yeah. And we... So, can I ask yeah, you a question? How did it feel when you picked up the rooster? Well, it felt interesting because I never Because really you got to pick up a rooster. rooster. 
Yeah, yeah. see all the stuff that theorizing when yeah. you're researching and doing all that, and now you get to experience yeah. a rooster, yeah. and you did. Yeah. Now that yeah. is an awesome God. Very yeah. good creation. And, and the clever thing was that my pet cat, whose name is Spring, she was gone at the moment, which gave me the opportunity to uh, receive a rooster from the universe. Right. And like the perfect even little moment. Yeah, yeah, and even though he's small in size, he's still my rooster, and I'm all right with that. Well, and I'm glad you're all right yeah. with that. And also, we we were sort of prepared because we found this old cage, like like this old uh, hamster cage or rodent cage that we haven't used, and we decided we could use that for the rooster. And also, we just used some bowls. And we used one bowl for him to drink water out of. And yeah. we also got him like some seeds for him to eat. And we Good. put that in the other bowl. Good. And yeah. And yeah, see that the universe is interesting because if you really focus on something, you'll get it. That's right. And you can manifest a rooster. The interesting, I love the interesting it. thing is that you, the universe gives it to you in a very clever way like mm -hmm. yeah. a way that you never imagined like i never imagined right. my cat would get lost and all of a sudden i'd find a rooster never would have thought of that came back but now i have Wait, a rooster now you have a rooster calling all roosters it. head towards rocco <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a great story thank you so much yeah yeah that that was great i had ones with feathers you know that because my grandma mm -hmm. yeah. always kind of sends me feathers yeah. yeah. And I and I was talking to somebody and I was like, you know, I really I, I love that every once in a while I'll find a feather and it it, uh, it shows up and I think it's my grandma. Like I'll just find a feather in my house like no, you know, with no uh where a feather would have come from. You know, I don't have down pillows or anything like that, but all of a sudden there'll just be a feather that has somehow permeated the walls and come through the house. And I was just, I started saying, I started to do this thing and I was like, feather, feathers that are free, feathers, feathers, come to me. And I started singing that like, you know, over a couple of days. And I swear to God that I lived inside an apartment building that you, you didn't, it didn't open to the street. You had to go in the apartment building, walk up some stairs and go to my door, something like that. I had feathers everywhere in that house you couldn't get away from them i opened the door and there was like all these feathers like against the wall <laughs> like my door that was upstairs two flights inside of an apartment building there was just feathers just pressed up against the doors like trying to come in and i was like you know anything will come to you if you call it but that's true anything will come to you if you focus on it and call it so Whatever you're going to focus on, you're going to get. That's feathers and that's other stuff. It's not only the fun feather stuff and the roosters that will come. It's the other stuff too. So focus on what you really, really want. You know what I mean? Don't focus on no money because then you, you propagate no money. Don't focus on too many bills. You have too many bills. Focus on your abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Love it. If focus you really on the feathers. If you really want something, just continue wanting it because you know you always have access to it if you focus on it enough. Because that, that's what I think. When I when I want something, I focus on it until I get it. Mm -hmm. Keep rocking. Yeah, all right. Well, You're thank you for it. listening to my story. Well, thank you for I, sharing your story. Yep. And thank and, you for joining in on humanity. That was yeah, awesome. Been, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Roxy. Hey, hey, baby. What do you think about these beautiful children the, the, from <laughs> Florida taking hold of the gun, uh, the gun, uh, anti-gun, or anti, well, let's not say anti-gun, but the gun control, the ones that are out there? I think it's, I think it's, it's the perfect movement of the now. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's the next logical step. Yeah, but these are like the Whatever. these are the kids that we've been waiting for. I want to say, you know what I mean? They're like coming in now. Yeah, we're getting to because see them rise. Yeah, 
we're, we're every generation offers a new uh, vibrational framework of freedom, mm-hmm. a little bit of more allowability. Yeah. And then in this awakening, it's just been accelerated because it used to be generations apart, but now it's within the same generations. And mm-hmm. also, you know, children are giving their parents permission to be awesome too. So that even broadens the field. So the children that are being birthed today have less of an idea of limitations at the get go. Mm-hmm. They're still a forgotten God, but they have more freedoms of my own worthiness return and its immediacy. And it's amazing that we get to watch this. We get to be a part of this world. It is priceless. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's exciting. It's exciting yeah, to it watch sure them is. go. It's like, whoa. Yeah, it's like, go, baby. Yeah, I know. I was like, woohoo. You know, you take it. And they're just so motivated and just they they know their power. They know yeah. their power. You know, 14, I don't think I knew that kind of power. I didn't have well, that. Of course you did. But that was then and this is now. No, of course. Just, always remember, I, be your now. Be your God. Too. Yeah, don't, exactly. Don't forget you. It's just exciting you. to see the stuff coming that we've been talking yeah. about. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Every time one of those kids gets up and says something, I'm like, oh, you go. You go. You go. <laughs> and now he's like, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I love it. Hey, so we're almost at the well, we, yeah. we have about eight minutes. I don't see any other questions if anybody has any, but do you wanna um do you wanna sort of sum up, summarize, give us an outgoing monologue of truth and beautiful of awesomeness. Self? <laughs> awesomeness? Yeah. I don't know. I think okay. My thing in life is I get up and I be. Osiphia has taught me be and you shall see. Mm-hmm. And then he also said, be yourself to discover yourself. So that's what it is. It's a journey in the now, just choosing your truth. And there's no other big secret. The mind makes things complicated, but the universe is so simplistic. It's mm-hmm. now I am. And that's it. There's nothing else. Everything else that's the shadows of distractions and the ideologies of separation is the taught system that no longer needs to be chosen. It's very difficult and full of angst not to do that. I know because we're so used to it, but you know you can choose yourself. So just, just keep being you and know that you're worthy of being chosen, of being created. You were chosen to be existence. Non-existence is full. We're in existence. You're here. You were chosen. Accept that awesomeness and take it as your own. It's scary. We know. But like you just said, Karen, the other children, the children that were seen, 12, 14 years old, doing these things we could have never even imagined. Yeah. It's because of the work that we've done to allow them. And now they're taking up the idea of their worthiness and saying, I am, yeah. which always just does leads to one thing, essentially. So that's what's going to happen. So we're all doing it ourselves, but none of us do it unless we choose ourselves. There's no light offered until there's a light. And that's what we are. We're lighthouses. We're beacons of light offering ourselves of worthiness returned. And so each individual can choose themselves. So go ahead and rock that world. That's all. That's about it. And you can find me at odysseyofascension.com. And if you care to donate, odysseyofascension.com. And also YouTube, odysseyofascension.com. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And, um, yeah, there's not much to say. And your slide class. Yeah. The slide classes are under the uh, teachings. I have a teachings tab, and they're under there. And they're they're on the YouTube under, uh, you know, like a Tilly's class. Um uh, the, there's a series of six with the Tillies and the Ka and the Cupid. They usually have the globes uh, ones. And, you know, my my Friday channelings are the ones with the backgrounds behind me. Um, or the slide classes are a whole bunch of people with pictures, you know, that, the, that we, we have them on Zoom. And so we offer that too. And that's an ongoing class. I've been going for almost two years now, year and a half, a uh, year and seven months or eight months. And they're exquisite. They're just the channeled edge. They're always right there on the next thing. And they're just mind-blowing. And it's wonderful to get your mind blown because it challenges you. It challenges yourself of, man, how can this be a truth? Well, it's there. It has to be some kind of validation. Otherwise, I couldn't see it. You know, And and you're in this just wonderful expression of your next idea of yourself. And it's perfect. It's just... um, the slide classes are exceptional. I love them. I love them. And we have a channel, a whole bunch of different entities through there too, as you can see on the YouTube. But that's it. Yeah, that's what I got. Keeping me. 
Well, you're rocking it the Ro Roxy style. Rocking rockin it, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you so All much right, for baby. being here. And you're yeah. always welcome. Always, always. So. Well, thanks for calling me. You say, yeah, hey, we need someone. I was like, okay, let's yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, I don't expect this to be the last call. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Hey, All everyone, right. thank you so very much. This has been the Saturday Human Colony webinar with Roxanne Swainhart. You can find her on odysseyofascension.com. And next week, we will have Jim Charles back uh, channeling. And if you would like to become a member of Human Colony, you can go to the hucalo.org website and sign up for $10 a month. You always have access to all of Jim's channeling and all of the latest things going on in Human Colony. So much love, namaste, and we'll see you next much time. Much love, everyone. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care.